Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about circuit breakers. And you can see here, okay, this is what, this is the panel, it just happens to be on the boat that I'm working on right now. And these are the circuit breakers up on the, up on the top row, and those are the bigger circuit breakers down there. And then everything else that's down here, and this whole section down here, these are all the control systems. So we're not going to talk about control systems, we're going to talk about circuit breakers. So I'm going to try to zoom in on one here and see if you can see the breakers that I'm talking about. So I'm just going to point to a breaker here. Now this breaker right here, this is a Merlin Gurren, and, uh, but most of the breakers are pretty much the same, just different brand numbers. And what I want to point your attention to here, it starts off with this, these numbers that are on the breaker and, and what they mean. Okay, so the first number here that I'm going to come up to, this is the C30T32HDC. Okay, so the C32H, that's the manufacturer part number. So that's not going to, uh, that doesn't mean all that much. The DC means it's a DC breaker. DC breakers are more robust than AC breakers. And why is that? Well, that's because when, when you go to break a current, the, you get an arc. When you disconnect a current, you get an arc. And the arc for AC dissipates quicker than the arc for a DC. And that's because an AC is going negative, positive, negative, positive, 50 or 60 times a second, depending on if you're in a European or an American system. But a DC doesn't. A DC breaker stays holding current the whole time that the breaker is trying to disconnect the path. And when the breaker tries to disconnect the electrical current path, the, that arc that is made is super hot, and that super heat makes plasma gas and plasma gas is the fourth state of matter and the fourth state of matter plasma gas is conductive so in effect what happens is is that the breaker goes to trip and it leaves an arc and as the arc is splitting apart opening up the arc is leaving a trail of plasma gas that maintains the arc so therefore a DC breaker has to be more robust than an AC breaker and you can you can verify this in one of the ways by looking at switches and oftentimes you'll see a switch and it'll say AC or it'll say AC DC but you almost never see a switch that says DC it's either AC DC or AC and the reason for that is is a switch that isn't really very strong on the inside is going to be an AC switch and a switch that has a what they might call a tortured path is a AC DC switch and a tor tortured path is occasionally if you look at a fuse you ever see a fuse and it almost looks like a lightning bolt and then it's uh, the, the bolt the, the the path of the fuse is going left right left right and that is what's called a tortured path. Other times you'll see a breaker, a fuse that's a huge hold in your hand, almost looks like the size of a baseball. And what those are, they've got a straight through path, but the path is filled with sand. And so as the, as the fuse itself is burning away, sand is filling the area and displacing the plasma gas. So back to this breaker. Now we come, so now that's what this DC is right here. So now we look down here and it's a C16. So the 16 is the amps at which the breaker blows. But the C is really important. The C is the curve at which a breaker blows. And most people never think about the curve at which a breaker blows. And this is really important, especially if you're on boats or alternative power or off the grid or on generators. So let's go over what these, what this curve right here. So that right there, let's, I'm, I'm just going to point to a breaker. That one there is a C curve breaker, which really it shouldn't because we're on a boat. And so, there are four curves of a breaker, and the curve is the amount of inrush current and the amount of time before uh, compared to amperage that the breaker trips at. Like, you look at that breaker right there, it says 16 amps, so shouldn't it trip at 16 amps? Well, of course. But what happens if you have 16 amps of motor and you want it to run at 14 amps and trip at 16 amps, but when you start the motor, like let's say on an air conditioning, it might take 32 amps for a half a second and 20 amps for a second and a half before the before the air conditioning motor gets up to speed and now that the air conditioning motor is up to speed now it's going to run at let's say 14 amps just as an example so the breaker has to be designed to take that to take that curve of current and that is the breaker curve and so a C curve a C curve breaker sometimes although it doesn't really mean it sometimes people say C curve is used the C stands for commercial and B curve people say stands for boats okay so let's go over what a B curve breaker is a B curve breaker trips quicker so if you've got a long run of cable, for example, you may have a long run of cable, so that cable is going to kind of heat up and dissipate a little bit of energy. And if that's the case, then you might end up with a 
fire inside the cable before a C-curve breaker trips. And this has happened, especially now as boats have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger, and people are still using the old C-curve breakers, well, kind of as this one is right here, then that's become an issue. And so, so now there've been a fair number of small fires that have started on boats because of because the B-curve breaker would have prevented, where a C-curve breaker doesn't actually trip before the before the wire itself goes into what they call thermal runaway overheats and smokes the insulation and burns up another another uh, time the B curve breaker might be used is in a generator and so you might have 20 20 circuits coming off of a generator and if you added up the current and all the circuits simultaneously let's say it comes out to be a hundred amps but the but the generator itself is only capable of putting out 50 amps and so but you know you're never using all the breakers at the same time but what happens if that whole section of wire that is coming off of that generator gets pinched let's say a truck runs over it somebody's driving a bulldozer and they they drive over the uh, um, they drive over the uh, the wire cable what if that first wire cable that I was talking about that was that burst into flames on the C curve breaker what if that burst in the flames, as it does, and when a wire normally bursts in the flames, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's pretty dramatic, because the insulation drops off, making a whole bunch of toxic smoke. The wire now is overheating, and the wire takes off like an active slinky, and so it's twisting and gr twisting, red-hot twisting, and, uh, and grabs whatever other wires are around it and melts through their insulation, because, of course, this wire is red-hot that's twisting around, and shorts those wires simultaneously. A B-curve breaker tr trips quicker than a C-curve breaker, and in such a situation uh, where you don't have enough current in the end of the generator or the end of your power source, let's say an inverter or a generator, to trip all of those breakers simultaneously, but a B-curve breaker very well would trip where a C-curve breaker wouldn't. So, alternative energy, inverters, generators, super long power cords, we use B-curve breakers. Commercial power running just, uh, let's say, in a, uh, in a regular house, you would use a C-curve breaker. So what about A-curve breakers and D-curve breakers? Okay, D-curve breakers, they take even more current for a longer period of time and their inrush current is really high. So what would be an inrush current that we would use a D-curve breaker for? Transformers. That's the one that normally in our everyday life that we would use a higher, a higher, uh, a D-curve breaker for. And it's because, have you ever plugged in a computer? When you plug in a computer, the, the little cable to a computer, what happens? You get a shock. You get a spark. Right? If you pull out the, pull out the power cord to your computer and plug it in real slow and watch, you'll see it. It'll go crack. You ever wonder why that is? You ever look at a schematic for a transformer? And what do you see for a schematic for a transformer? It's a wire going in, it makes a little coil and goes right back out. You ever wonder, well, isn't that a direct short? Why isn't then that wire just gonna burst into flames? I plug it in, how come that transformer doesn't burst into flames? It's just a wire that goes one direction, wraps around an iron core and comes back out. Same wire, isn't that a direct short? Well, it is a direct short until an effect called capacitance reactance, which is kind of more beyond than you would ever really want to know. But what that means is that electricity doesn't like to reverse direction, especially if it's going around an iron core. And so it starts to resist the ability to pass current back and forth when, it, when the wire is wrapped up. And so what happens is, is when you plug in a transformer for the first two or three or four cycles, maybe a quarter of a second, there is a direct short. The, the, the breaker itself sees a direct short. Whereas direct, shortly after that, the capacitance reactance, the inductance, the impedance, that little triangle, if you've ever like studied that electricity, there's a little triangle there that builds up what would be a resistance and that wire is no longer kind of making a direct short. But to deal with this effect you have to go to a d-curve breaker now you might notice this if you ever like let's say show up on a boat and you show up on a boat and you say oh yeah you know i've got a uh, a 50 amp breaker i've got a boat that's on uh, 50 amps and uh, so you plug a 50 amp uh, transformer into a 50 amp breaker and pow it pops the circuit breaker and you go oh that was odd 
So you click the circuit breaker back on and you try to hook everything, bam, it pops the circuit breaker. And you'll be standing there in the dock going, well, this seems a little odd. And, but if you plug that same transformer, let's say, into a 200 amp breaker, yeah, it works. So nothing wrong with a transformer, but well, sure enough, we're not getting, we're not going to be able to run a, a 50 amp transformer off a 200 amp breaker and be safe about it. So what's the solution? The solution is a D-class breaker, so that over a long time that there is a load on the breakers, the the breaker would trip. Let's say you put a 50 amp breaker and you put 52 amps through the breaker for 10 minutes, the breaker will trip. But if you put four times the load of the breaker, let's say uh, 200 amps goes through the breaker for a tenth of a second, then the breaker doesn't trip. Whereas a C-class breaker would trip. Now how come a C-class breaker would trip? What's the difference in the curve? And the difference is, is that each breaker has two parts to it. And so if you look at, this is a diagram of the breaker. Now I'm going to try to zoom in and see if I can keep focus. Oh yeah, yeah, there we go. Now look at like, let's say right there. That's the diagram of the breaker. And if you'll notice, there's two parts to that diagram. See that? There's a bottom part of the breaker and a top part of the breaker. The top part of the breaker is the bullet breaker. The bottom part of the breaker is the thermal breaker. So each breaker has two breakers built into it. Now what's the difference? Well the difference is is that the bottom part of the breaker, the thermal breaker, that is for, let's say this is a 6 amp breaker on the C curve right here. Okay so that breaker right there, if I ran 7 amps through that breaker for 7 or 8 minutes it'll trip. If I run 5.9 amps through that breaker for 10 hours it won't, it won't trip. But what happens if I short the wires, just totally short the wires past that breaker? Well, in a situation like that, we can't wait a half a second because we want that breaker to trip instantaneously. So what happens is, is in this part of the breaker up here normally, they have a little, a little thing that looks like a bullet. And it's got three or four wraps of the wire around the bullet. And then directly after that, down in this part of the breaker down here, is the thermal part of the breaker that is either, it's either measuring heat or, uh, or the, magnetic, uh, uh, the magnetic load. And so the different breakers work different ways, but they all will have up in this part of the breaker, if you took this breaker apart, cut it in half, there'll be a little round bullet-like object right here. And if you have a direct short, then there's enough current to pull that bullet out and that trips the breaker. So each breaker has two aspects to it, a bullet breaker and a thermal breaker. And that's important to us because if you ever get an, an absolute direct short, then we don't want any of these curves to be delaying the tripping of the breaker. We want that breaker to trip right now. Okay, so that is about it for breakers. I just kind of want to give that out because oftentimes when we get engineers on board and we're having these discussions, I realize that people haven't had full breaker discussions.